Hey, what is up ladies and gentlemen, I'm Mega Man here from the likes of the Maxi Toys, and ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the, um, well, a brand new set of Let's Plays we're going to be doing for our YouTube channel, this is the forms of the Mega Man Marathon. Yes, we're about to be doing all classic Mega Man games specifically because the, thanks to the celebration to Mega Man 11 is about to be on its horizon until new forms of the 2nd of October, so we thought we might as well able to tackle through every single classic Mega Man games, 1 through 10 including Mega Man and Base for the Super Famicom slash Game Boy Advance, which I'm pretty sure but a couple were able to do that particular title. So. Today's episode of the forms of the beginning portion of Mega Man Marathon is the fact that Mario, he, the only plumber in town, managed to able to tackle for the first game in the series released in 1987 for the Nintendo Entertainment System slash Famicom if you lived in Japan. However though, uh, in Junior Likes of Japan, uh, that game is also known as Rockman because, well, we'll get to that shortly after that. So even then, that um, I should probably forgot to mention about this, the only method of recording sessions on every single Mega Man games, aside from Mega Man and Base, um, the recording session is going to be at full 1080p and it's going to be recorded on Mega Man Legacy Collections 1 and 2 respectively. As far as Mega Man and Base is concerned, well, we're going to be doing it on the Wii U Virtual Console re-release version because that could be arbitrary reasons, because even I know, until when Buttercup decides to able to tackle for that game. So with that being said though, here we, are, here we go, on to the first game in the series of the Mega Man Classic series, the one that started it all, and Mario is the only one who's going to be tackling for the first game in the series. Welcome to Let's Play Mega Man 1 for the Nintendo Entertainment System, released in 1987. So, enjoy. Hey, what is up ladies and gentlemen, I'm Mario here from the likes of the Maxi Toys videos. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first installment of the forms of the Mega Man Marathon set of Let's Plays, specifically the classic Mega Man games. We're about to be tackling through Mega Man, released on the Nintendo Entertainment System, released originally in 1987, developed by Capcom. Which is pretty understandable, because uh, Mega Man is the famous uh, mascot for that particular company. So. With that being said though, let's get to it, shall we? Even though there's no uh, intro cutscene to the game, unlike when we get to the future games in this series, most notably Mega Man 2 and the future games and onwards, that we're able to, um, able to actually get ourselves an intro introduction screen. So with that being said, um, all it gets in this title screen, as you can see right there, we always just have to press start buttons. Even I know, as soon as we press the start, then we can able to actually select up to six different robot masters. So we've got Cutman, Gutsman, Iceman, Barman, Fireman, and the Electman. So, before the future games in the series, they actually bring something uh, new to the table, like the forms of eight robot masters, including the likes of uh, Mega Man 11 coming up. But even now, at the moment, in the first installment of the series, it only has like six robot masters. So, with that being said, um, you can actually choose whatever stage you want to go for. Like, you can either go for Cutman or Gutsman or any other robot masters for this matter. So for this first stage in the game, I'm actually going to be going through Barman first just because, well, I feel like I was going to be able to grab something from here. So even then though, no. uh, this is how Mega Man plays out. Basically, you run and just keep on shooting. So even then though, no, that it's almost like Contra of all things, except, well, a little bit more unique in that retrospect. So even then though, no, that, um, yeah, Mega Man only shoots at one direction, and that was directly in front of him. So I think that's the only things you might, might as well able to actually consider this fact. So even then, though, with that being said, though, um, yeah, this is how the game plays out. You basically just, uh, back in the day in the NES, that's uh, how the fact that, um, 
Well, we'll explain more details into the actual full game of Mega Man 1 until we're able to actually come towards it at the very end. So, let me classify for as such right about now. Uh, not to mention, there's actually two things I want to point things out. I'm not a pure master at Mega Man. I gotta tell you that, guys, now, because even then, uh, what makes this, uh, the first game in the series so difficult in comparison to the likes of the future games in the series is because of, not only because of archaic design choices, or maybe it's just a little bit of a more of a, you know, the first game to be released on, but uh, it's also because it's also really dang difficult sometimes. Most notably because of a few things. Level designs like the forms of spikes as you can see right there. Because if you notice right from the start though, spikes will instantly kill Mega Man. So even then though, that if you accidentally touch those spikes, then you have to watch out for them. So even then though, you just have to be sharp on that one. Another noticeable thing about this is the forms of the enemies themselves. Now, normally, in, in comparison to the likes of uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, well, before Sonic the Hedgehog exists, and especially noticeable with the forms of uh, Super Mario Bros. back in the day, well, to be more specifically, after Super Mario Bros., that uh, you simply kill these um, enemies while simply just jumping on them, but in this game, you have to purposely try to use the Mega Buster, because yes, that's what his weapon is all about for the... Uh, default weapon by uh, circumstances, and in that way we should able to actually kill these enemies. See, for no, sometimes every single enemy does have their different hit points and all that stuff, so that should be expected as such. So I believe this game did first came out in the Famicom, released on 1987, around the same day as the American version got the game as well, but it forms off also in 1987. However though, in all countries for some reason, only gets the game until 1989 or 1990 for some arbitrary- Oh, I think it's probably because of how the fact that in uh, 1990 for European versions or something like that can be summarized as the uh, the Mega Drive version, which I'll talk more on that as soon as we're able to actually get to that point momentarily. So even though, no, for the most part though, that uh, with the uh, well, I'll explain more details about the game as soon as we're able to actually finish up this first stage, which is the forms of the Barman stage. So even then, though, that uh, for the most part, though, uh, it's basically a simple platformer, and especially knows the way of shooting uh, mechanics here and there as well. Now, as you can see, that Mega Man actually got himself his health meter. So even then, though, uh, it's a little bit different than the likes of the any other Mario games at this rate, that uh, you can only afford to get hit like three times and stuff. But even then, though, Mega Man only has like a health bar. So yeah, here we go. On to the first boss in the game. And that's the forms of Bar Man. So yeah, basically you have to keep on shooting him at all times. You just have to watch over by the forms of these bomb explosion effects because if you manage to get hit by these explosions, then well, obviously you might as well get killed. And also you have to watch over for these little uh, attack movements and stuff like that. Which that will be the first step of the playthrough. I also just wanted to point out right away that uh, since I've already uh, discussed upon this earlier ago, I'm actually not a pure master at the entirety of the Mega Man games, to be more specifically the classical ones. Although I haven't really played the Mega Man games for quite a long time at this rate, so I think that's probably the reason why I'm just a little bit too newbie when it comes to this particular for this matter. So anyways though, for Bomb Man, you have to basically you just have to keep on shooting at him. So even though the only th few things you need to avoid is the forms about the fact that, well, first of all, bombs you need to avoid. And second of all is the fact that he jumps all over the place. And every time you actually defeat one of those robot masters, then you get yourselves the actual weapons. See, but then, though, for instance, I've got myself the Hyper Bomb, which basically allows me to be able to actually toss these bombs right at the uh, the enemies on certain obstacles. See, but then, though, that could be very handy in some situations. So, now let's move on to the next level. Let's go ahead and go to Gutsman stage next. As one warning out right away though, is that this game introduces the score system, very much like the old school archaic uh, video games out there like this. So even then though, expecting how the fact that you can see on the top portion of the screen, they has a, well, score count. Every time you kill enemies, or complete certain amount of stages, or anything else for this, for this matter, um, you get yourself a bounty of uh, score point system every time you're able to do something like this. So. But even then, though, that makes it a little bit obvious. So, 
Oh god, this one makes it a little bit difficult with this level in particular, is the fact that we need to do a lot of timing jumps on that part, because no matter what though, every time you're able to actually stand completely still, and once these platforms starts to uh, tilt in, uh, basically, uh, Mega Man just drops like a dang rock, which even then, I will admit though right away, it's a little bit more um, old school heavy and stuff like that for that nature, so... Anyways though, um, aside from that, um, there's not much else there's, there's not much else I can really say about Mega Man, because as far as I'm aware, I think the first time I've ever experienced the forms of Mega Man entirely, and that's the forms of how the fact that whenever I looked upon um, any other virtual console reviews, most notably in uh well, uh, Devon 212, which I think I remember that back in the day, that he did review any other Nintendo Wii Virtual Console games, which that was probably one of my favorite childhood memories of that particular video series. And that's the reason why I was interested of Mega Man. And thanks to the forms of back in 2013, and to be more specifically, E3 2013, which is about five years ago actually, that uh, Mega Man has recently joined in the Super Smash Bros. Uh, for the Nintendo 3DS and Nintendo Wii U, and most recently that he will make a comeback in the forms of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate in the most recent AM E3 2018 appearance. So even then though, I was really looking forward to that actually. So even then though, that, yeah, that's all I can really say about this, so... I think Gutsman might be a little bit tricky of the stage to begin with, most notably because of the actual platforms you have to make yourselves through. So even then, though, that maybe seems the case, mind you, but even then, though, that's as far as I can usually say about this for the most part, so... Anyways, though, uh, let's go ahead and equip ourselves the forms of Hyper Bomb. In order to actually just change your weapons to your disposal, you have to simply press the plus button, or in this case, no, what I was thinking of. I keep on thinking of the, the virtual console versions of the game. Um, you have to simply press your start button into able to actually switch your, um, well, um, weapons. Now, I'm pretty sure the select button might be something to do with the forms of, um, well, just trying to pause in the actual game itself, or even then, I don't know. So, I believe Gutsman is actually, a uh, weakness is the forms of Hyper Bomb, which I will admit though right away, is very effective on Gutsman. So now we got uh, done with Gutsman, so even then though, we've got ourselves our new weapon, which I can assume this might actually be called Super Arms. So even then though, we'll actually uh, show this off until we get to the next level, so... Let's move on to Cutman next. See, Fernando, that I'm pretty sure we've almost nearly towards the end of the game already, because as far as I'm aware, in the first game in the series of Mega Man, this is by far the shortest game of the bunch, compared to the likes of the future games in the series, most notably Mega Man 2 and Mega Man 3, neither especially noticeable in the future games in the series, uh, will go a little bit longer as far as I'm aware for that. So, Anyways though, what I found is kind of odd though, is the fact that I'm the only one managed to tackle through the first game in the series, because I remember back in, uh, about a year ago now, that I've managed to able to tackle for the first game in the Sonic the Hedgehog Game Gear marathons of all things, that I've recently tackled through Sonic 1 for the Game Gear, which is kind of odd, because even then, no, I was the only one managed to tackle for the first game in the series every time in each marathon, so, I mean, what's next? Mega Man X marathon to tackle for the first game in the series? Maybe. I don't know. We'll find out. So anyways though, I can't believe how the fact that Mega Man 1 has been over 30 years since upon its release, back in during the likes of, you know, in 1987 of all things, which even then, I will admit though right away, that could be something more likely consumption. And thanks to the forms of, uh, you know how the fact that, um, we've actually got ourselves Mega Man 11 coming out and during the likes of the 2nd of October eventually, um, that, that game has recently announced thanks to the likes of the 30th anniversary of Mega Man himself. Which, I will admit though right away, that was very, very good. And even very surprising too. And even then though, they're actually going to be introduced to uh, new mechanics of the game, which I'm really looking forward to at this rate. Because even then though, I'm very curious to see how the fact that what the new mechanics are looks like. So even then though, it's basically like, well, we'll get to Mega Man 11 until that game comes out. Or even just wait until whenever we decide to do the Let's Play of that game, until eventually, until November, until this year. So, I'm on the same time as when uh, Sonic needs to get back into Mega- uh, no. What did I say Mega Man? Um, Sonic Mania Plus, in the forms of Encore mode. See, for now, that can take a while to able to processing through that. But I, on the plus side though, that uh, we managed to able to actually notice something like this, so... 
Now, the reason why what makes this uh, the first game in the series compared to the future games makes it a tad bit easier, but at the same time, that the first game in the series is really, really tough. Most notably because of patience and observation is key to victory right here, because you can definitely notice something is the fact that enemy behavior can uh, can really throws you off at times. Even especially noticeable how the fact that um, spikes will actually instantly kills Mega Man, and especially noticeable with the forms of how the fact that well, you know when uh, some other platforming sections can get a little bit more arcade look. Even especially noticeable how the fact that um. Whenever you're trying to able to actually go to a complete stop, Mega Man just somehow slips over, or sometimes slips. See, no, no, that's oh, that's the only thing I need to point things out right away. And I would say this much, uh, since I was a little bit, uh, bit of a more of a newbie to the series, um, I'm gonna be constantly gonna be using those save stating because, again, as you can see from a quality standpoint, it's in full 1080p because I'm playing this on the PlayStation 4 on the Mega Man Legacy Collection, because I don't think there's any way I can able to record this game on the Nintendo Wii Virtual Console for the time, because, well, I did test that out on my own time, but then, all of a sudden, my Rockso Game Capture HD Pro doesn't seem to like to emulate uh, some of the older NES games onto the firms of conversion to um, anything else. So, oh, I really hate these enemies, as you can tell, because they can really kick out of the punch when it comes to the actual um, health depleting from my department. But anyways though, oh yeah, every time you actually come towards at the very end of a level, you actually face off against all those robot masters. I don't think I've actually mentioned about this in the beginning portion of this let's play in particular, but even then though, every time you actually come towards those particular parts, then you were able to actually come across into a certain little bit of a small amount of enemies, and then every once in a while if you reach at the very end, then you face off against with the robot masters themselves. So, and there goes my another extra life. Oh well, no matter, because we actually got to the checkpoint right there. Because thankfully though, if you die at certain points with the robot masters themselves, uh, you basically guarantee you would able to actually classify for able to actually obtain, you know, uh, just trying to get to the continue where you left off. However though, I'll get to the actual uh, game over screen as soon as we get to the final set of amount of stages until we get to that certain point. So here we go, onto the forms of Cutman. So, his weakness is the forms of the Super Arm Gutsman's weapon, because even then, uh, this is what Gutsman's weapon is all about, or in this case, Super Arm if you will. You can able to pick up as many of those blocks as you can, to be more accurate, the heavy blocks, and that way you should be able to chuck them right at the enemies or even robot masters themselves. So. That's very cool for that weapon, but even then I will use that for just to deal out with uh, Cutman uh, very, very easily, so that way it will instantly KO him after all. So yeah, you get the idea. So next stage we're going to be hitting to is the forms of the Elect Man. So yeah, I apologize for the actual uh, joke cuts between, uh, you know, screen by screen resolution, because even then though, it's one of pointing out right away, because even then, I'm going to be constantly going to be doing a lot of uh, safe stating, and that's why I have to keep on jump cuts for this point, because even then, though, that expecting a lot of you guys to be criticizing for me to be cheating, but I don't know about you, but even then, though, that's just how I think it is, so. But, you know, you get the idea for, for this solution, so. Here we go with the Elect Man stage. Basically, we need to able to go a little bit for more of a climbing syndrome, and as far as I've noticed something, is that there actually contains, like, this very, very good item that you can get, well, only if you manage to obtain the Gutsman's weapon, in this case, the forms of Super Arm. And in that way, we should be able to actually just, uh, come across into that as soon as we continuously climbing up. So, while dealing with a lot of enemies sometimes, because even then, oh, that can always attempt to kick my butt every time whenever I come towards this particular segment's noticing, but as soon as we're able to approach this point here, we have to deal with the, probably the most annoying obstacle in this entirety of the Mega Man series, and that's the forms of these disappearing blocks. Because the thing is with disappearing blocks, it always comes up as like, almost like completely random, but you have to be very, very, very accurate when it comes to doing a lot of platforming, because if you screwed up at least just once or twice, Chances are you might as well able to fall down to the uh, Eiffel Bosmus pit, or you have to restart the entire section all over again, which can be a little bit of a cryptic in my honest opinion though. So anyways though, let's go ahead and go to this alternative route here, just because I just feel like it, and also not to mention because it makes it a little bit more easier when it comes to certain platforming segments noticing, so I think I should probably point things out right away. 
And for the most part though, everything else is something a little bit okay around here. Well, despite these enemies just trying to kick my butt any single point of it though. And we got ourselves some more health and all that stuff, which is very, very good in my honest of taste. And here, this is where we get ourselves this particular item over there. But again, you do need to acquire the Super Arm, or in this case, Gutsman's weapon, just because if you manage to obtain this particular item, then we get ourselves the Magnet Beam, which basically, the Magnet Beam can actually able to actually just classify for creating some of these platforms, meaning that um, it's essentially the easiest uh, mode when it comes to get, obtaining this item in general. That's only because of how the fact that if you can't be bothered to do with the most difficult sections, then, by the way, you can able to actually use that any time. So, don't use that too much, because even then, though, once you use your one of your weapons, um, it actually drains your weapon energy. So, even then, though, it's one of the pointings out right away. I suggest you're able to use it wisely. So, you don't use it all the time, so just use it wisely. So, it's one of the pointings out right away. So, anyway, so, we're almost nearly towards the end of the forms of the Electman stage. So, hoping this should be a little bit more of a delta for anyway. So... Yeah, I apologize if I keep on sniffing most of the time, that's only because of how the fact that I almost felt a little bit rough here, cold and stuff like that, which I'll admit though right away, that I'm perfectly fine for the most part, it's just how the fact that, well, you know. Alright, so now we come towards the very end, so even then, all we have to do now is basically we need to climb all the way up into the form of the actual ladder, and not to mention we need to avoid those electrical currents, well, at least to be more specifically these electricity, because... Again, if you get hit by electricity, then you obviously take a hit, so you don't want to let that happen. And, uh, that's what I can really think about it, so... I will say, though, is that the soundtrack is very, very cool and pretty awesome to listen to. Until we get to Mega Man 2, the music's, music's department might be becoming very familiar. If you notice, if you ever watch the, uh, some of these Flash animation, uh, type of, uh, movies like that. Anyways, here we go with the Elect Man. His weakness is actually forms of the Cutsman weapon. Which, in this case, for this matter, is the forms of, um, well, Roller Cutter, as far as the actual weapon is called, but in forms of the Cutman weapon. And here we go, sells the forms of the, well, Thunder Beam, which I will admit though right away, with this specific specific weapon alone, actually, before we get to this, however, though, let's get into the next level in the game, and that's the forms of Iceman. So, as you might expect it, this actually takes place in this icicle themed level. So even then, though, don't be surprised until we actually come up towards the forms of these ice physics every once in a while. So even then, though, you get the suggestions right here, because even then, though, if I manage to run too fast, and if I want to turn back, then I get slipped over all over the place. So even then, though, that because it's in an ice themed level, well, you know, you get the idea. So even then, though, this level can be very tricky sometimes, most notably because of how the fact what the actual structure of the level itself or even especially noticeable with the, uh, you know these disappearing blocks that we've on about ever since and during the likes of the Electman level? Well, that's how we're gonna be able to come across into them until just about any second or two. Although, luckily though, since you know how the fact that I've got myself my Magnet Beam, uh, that way I can able to actually skip the entire portion of the forms of these stupid disappearing blocks, because I despise disappearing blocks in any platforming games out there, because I know for the fact that it might be very difficult to able to actually just uh, jump at the right time scenario syndrome. But anyways, let's go pick up these health ammo, and that way we should be able to actually just get our health going. Until before Mega Man 2, we're actually going to be introduced into probably be the most nifty um, items in the actual Mega Man series entirely, which we'll get to that and, uh, while Sonic is going to be doing Mega Man 2. So, anyways though. Yeah, because I'm having trouble with the forms of these disappearing blocks, as you can see, but since I've got myself my Magma Beam, that way I can able to actually skip the entire portion of it. So even then, though, it makes it a little bit of a more of an easy move to able to perform that, because even then, though, if you get stuck on that specific section alone, and even including this particular section, then by all means, you can able to use that wisely, as I mentioned to you before. But again, don't use that too much, because it will drain too much. So, that's the one thing I need to point things out. So, there we go. Then we skip the entire portion of these, uh, disappearing block segments. See, so, if we let's move on to this particular point right here. 
I think this part might be very tricky though, because as you can see, we're actually going to be uh, right above the bottomless pit down here. But if we manage to get uh, fall off, or even especially noticeable with these uh, annoying parts about um, ant played in NES games back in the day, we'll just need forms of knockback. Because even then, if you manage to get hit by, you know, any other projectiles, even especially noticeable with the enemies themselves, well, basically, that um, you get yourself a really annoying knockback occurrence, which even then, though, if you manage to get knockback, then you pretty much have to restart the uh, where the checkpoint is. So, that can get pretty annoying and frustrating every once in a while, and I get butt kicked by the penguin over there, right from the start. But I, at least I got yourself some more health pickups, and even especially noticeable with these. I don't know what these are blue items are for. I think it's most likely because of how the fact with the uh, more weapon ammo uh, pickup, I'm presuming that much. So anyway, so let's go ahead and just avoid him from now on though, because I don't think there's anything we can do with him for now, other than just trying to kill him from, you know, just any other points of the level. And basically, we actually at the very end of the level, so even then, oh, I might as well able to use my, um, yeah, I might as well use the Mega Buster for now on though. But until we get to the very end of the forms of the Iceman level, even especially noticeable trying to challenge him, well, we're gonna have to use, uh, his weakness was actually forms of the Thunder Beam. See, Fernando, let's go ahead and pull that out, and hopefully we'll do it, hope for the best. See, Fernando, that it does a lot of damage on certain weapons, so there we go. And luckily, I've managed to survive with only one bit of health left. Oh man, that was very, very lucky. I gotta tell you that now. So anyways, there we go, so that's our next weapon in the lineup, and that's two forms of... Uh, the Ice Slasher. See, Fernando, that could be something worth mentioning until we get to the last stage before the, uh, the final, uh, final stage in the entirety of the game. And that's the forms of, well, Fireman. See, Fernando, it's a good thing that I think someone else managed to able to save, um, Fireman for last, just because of how the fact that, honestly, I found the, uh, well, the most of these robot uh, levels are, well, first and against with these robot masters, what I found is considerably difficult, which are both Elect Man and Fireman, because we'll get to that, we'll get to Fireman until we're able to fight against with him, so... Again, this Let's Play is gonna be super short, because even then, though, until the future games in the series, that we would able to actually go for a little bit of a longer minutes department, and then that way we could potentially try to able to actually finish the game as normal, so... Until we get to Mega Man 2, and even especially the future games in the series, that uh, expecting a Let's Play can go a little bit tap bit more longer. I will admit though, right away though, uh, I gotta say this much, is the fact that, um, we're probably not gonna go through, um, extra side characters run through on those specific Mega Man games, just like the ones in Sonic's Game Gear Marathon, because we're probably just gonna be stuck in with the blue Bomberman himself, or in this case, just the forms of, well, you know, as you guys can clearly tell on the screen, that um, sometimes the sprites can get a little bit more flickering every once in a while, but until when we get to Mega Man 2, it gets a little bit disorientating when it comes to sprite flickering, which even then though, which not only can be able to be visually distracting, but it's also not pleasant to look at sometimes. But even then though, until when Sonic will eventually going to be tackling through Mega Man 2, until when it gets to like, well, it's only for two parts short, like, I'm gonna spoil it for you guys right about now. Just because I'm actually gonna be, um, you know, going for the entirety of the game itself. So even then, though, they're expecting that this is the first game in the series, as I mentioned to you before. Then you probably guys should know what I'm trying to say here, so... Anyway, so let's freeze those, uh, flamethrowers in case if we actually use them as platforms. And, uh, we need to jump over there, see if then they even know, uh... Actually, I might as well use that, actually, so that way we could... Able to make our way to the leaps of faith situations, even though we don't afford to get hit with that specific uh, hazard alone. So, I will admit though right away is the fact that firemen can get really annoying at times. I will admit though right away, just because you know these are uh, fireballs, they constantly go to uh, show up, as you can see here. And then what happens is though is the fact that you act every time you actually go to these narrow platforming segments, uh, you have to deal with them, un unless if you're actually just trying to could afford to uh, get a knockback occurrence, which I will admit though right away, that can get pretty tedious every once in a while, which even then though, that can get easily get a consumption to this though, so... Anyway, so let's freeze up this little plot of boot fireball here, and wait for this flamethrower to go past, and hopefully we'll climb all the way up to the top. And, um, hopefully we could able to- now normally you can able to actually bypass this part completely, but... Uh, I'm probably not going to risk it though, because as you can see, uh, the 
Ice Slasher doesn't do any sort of affection to these fireballs from, uh, for these little, uh, configuration stuff like that. I, I, I do apologize if my dialogue has actually gone really, really sloppy at points, because I think that's all I can really describe it as Mega Man in general, because even then, though, that I'll get to more, um, history about him until we're able to actually, or if someone else for this matter, can able to actually just to realize how the fact that, well, uh, how, uh, Mega Man was first created, which even then, I'll, I'll uh, find things out on the internet for myself, and then I would able to actually talk about more on that, until we're able to actually get to the final few stages in the game, see, for now, no, because again, uh, this game is super short though, so, yeah, you get the idea. Fortunately though, that in 2006 anyway, uh, this game gets its remake on the forms of the PlayStation Portable game, and that's the forms of Mega Man Powered Up. Which is basically it's the exact same game as the first game in the series, but they did, uh, they managed to introduce into two new robot masters, which even then, I think we should probably discuss more into that game until we're able to actually get to the conclusion at the very end of the Mega Man Marathon, as one of the things out, so... Anyways, I keep on getting hit by these little stupid little, uh, projectile shooting range, uh, type of enemies, because they, they can really sometimes throws me off at some point. But anyways though, uh, let's go ahead and face off against with the, probably the most difficult robot master in the entire game in my opinion, and that's the forms of the fireman, because while I think about him, well, as soon as we start this fight off, then he shoots out these crap ton of fireballs, and he instantly KOs me. Well that's fine though, because every time you die, um, your health will about to be regenerated. Well, the only few exceptions which are your weapons ammo counts. So even then, no, don't expect it to be able to actually run out of those things very easily. So, you can definitely tell how the fact that this game is ball bustingly difficult sometimes. Even especially noticeable how the fact that when it gets to the very end of the game, it gets really, really, um, outright, um, nerve-wracking experience. So anyways though, I think his weakness, it was technically... I don't know, Cutsman's weapon, but well, I don't think it actually do that effective on that one, I don't think. But even then, no, we'll see what happens there, so... Anyways, let's go ahead and take down this, uh, Fireman again for a rematch. And, yeah, it doesn't do that much for, uh, you know, Cut Roller, or, yeah, just Cut Roller in general. So his weakness is the forms of the Ice Slashers, so even then, no, once we, uh, deal with him, like, several hits noticing. And there we go. That is the hardest robot master to deal with right there, so I will admit that right away. That is really, really tough for this fight. And that way, after killing the fireman, then we get ourselves the final weapon in the game, and that's the forms of Firestorm, which I'll probably show this up until we get to later on, because once you deal with all six of those robot masters, it will lead you to the final stage in the game, Dr. Wily. So he was the bad guy for the entire time, huh? So join me next time on Let's Play Mega Man is the fact that we're going to be finishing up the entire game to explore the Dr. Wily stages, so things can get pretty interesting to say the least. So yeah, see you guys next time. Later fellas.